Hi, my name is Conrad, aka Deus Ex Designs, and today I'll be teaching you how to make Doc Ock arms in Blender. So before we begin, this video will be broken up into timestamps for efficiency sake. Stage 1 will be the building part, we're going to be creating 7 different pieces, and then stage 2 is going to be the rigging. I just want to say a quick thank you to CG Cookie because I'm going to be using what I learned in this video of his for the rigging part. I'm going to be repeating the, the steps in order to do it, like in this video, but just so you know, this is where I learned how to do it, and uh, you know, go check him out. He's got good stuff. He does. I don't know why I laughed. All right, <laughs> time, time to start. All right, so I already have my scene set up from when I did the first time. So first things first, you're going to go here object and then go to snap and we're just putting the cursor at the world origin that way we can keep everything in the center and then after that we're going to be adding a circle and now I'm going to size it down by clicking S uh, something like that's good and then I'm going to duplicate it by clicking shift D so now there's two there and I'm not moving my mouse at all I'm going to click escape so now I can move my mouse and they're both still there I'm going to keep one in the center and then I'm going to bring the other one down. And remember, I'm trying to match that shape. So maybe if I go up here, it might be a little bit easier. Going up here, clicking Z, and I'll get a perfect top view. And then moving it like that. Okay, so now our two circles are looking like this. And now we have to fill the space in between the two circles. So by doing that, we can go here click Z to get a top view and then we join these two and then click tab to go to edit mode and then right here on the draw and now we just try to pick a point in the circle where it'll look like that and we're going to be trying to match one point to the side point hey it's me from editing this video so I made a mistake while recording this the first time so I'm just gonna fix that right here Make sure that you have 2D enabled and then also make sure that you're not in any of the top or side views as shown here because when you do that it'll actually uh, make the, the curve offset and yeah that's not right when if you just do it like this now it's actually on the same level as the curve. Alright back to the video and it's fine if it doesn't look like this one right now because we're actually just going to start reshaping it. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to click the middle one, this middle point, and I'm going to get rid of that vertice. That way, we only have to work with these two. Um, okay, let me get rid of that too. I didn't notice that. I'm going to try and line it up as perfectly as I can with this. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to click on this point, and I'm just going to try to move it so that it's straighter. Alright, something like that looks good. I'm going to move this part over here. And now to smooth it out a bit, so I click on the side part here, like the handle, and start moving it in. And then click here. And then click on the other handle and start kind of warping it like that. There. As long as the main shape looks pretty good, it really doesn't matter. There, now we have that part. And now we have to add a line that goes towards the middle. Go into edit mode by clicking tab. Go over to the draw. Now I'm going to click like right here-ish. I just want the uh, the roll off from the circle to look, you know, natural. I don't want it to be too sudden. So I'm going to try and like follow the curve with it. And then I'm going to be drawing right into the middle. And so this piece kind of swoops in a bit, but it's not over exaggerated. So yeah, we're just going to go here. I'm going to get rid of this again. All right, now I'm going to take this handle, strain it out again. That looks good. Move this right there. Something like that's good. Yeah, it looks fine. And now move I want to make sure it's in the center. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take this handle and kind of just let it ease into it a bit. I'm gonna have to fix this now. 
there. And we only have to dress one side because we're going to be using mirror modifiers for, you know, anything that's on one side that we want on the other, we just use a mirror modifier. Hey, so it's me again while editing. I just whipped this up quickly to show you as an example and to make sure that this side right here gets separated from the middle circle. So by doing that, you just go into edit mode and then you just do a drag click, select that and make sure that you select the vertex that belongs to this side of the shape. So that's separating from this middle circle here. And then you right click and go to separate, separate. And so now that's separated, we can use the mirror modifier to duplicate it on the other side. And because this is currently a curve, if I was to put a mirror modifier on it, I wouldn't be able to apply it. And we do want to apply it. So I'm going to go to convert and then go to mesh. There, now it's a mesh. Go over here, mirror. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks great. No, all right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I got scared for a sec. All right, so if once you apply the mirror modifier and it doesn't look right, hold Control A and then your pop up probably won't look like this. But um, all you have to do is go to like apply all, which probably be like around the top, and then it'll fix it. And then you go back to mirror there. And now I'm actually going to be applying the mirror modifier and I have to convert this back into a curve. Join. And now convert back to a mesh. Then we go to edit mode, go to vertices. Oh yeah, up here, that weld option. And then we go to options. Make your threshold 0.005 or just whatever works. You can try 0.005 first. And then if that doesn't work and you're merging with vertices, you're not trying to merge with, then you can switch to a lower number. Okay, that's good. Which one do I want to merge with? Okay, so I'll just merge with this one. And the way to merge it is just, you just click on the part that you want and then you can just move it around anywhere. It really doesn't matter, but as long as it's close and within the threshold of the auto merge, it'll just merge. Oh yeah, that's right. I almost forgot the middle. It looks like it's merged, but it is not. And actually I lied, it is. So now click A to select all and F. Now we select A again, toggle all, and then go over to mesh, go to clean up and limited dissolve and there we go now it's all clean go back out of uh, edit mode and now we go to solidify boom actually i'm gonna apply all and then i'm gonna even thickness and hold shift just so i can get a slower look at how it's gonna look um i'm gonna smooth this out and to get rid of that weird look i don't know how to describe it but <laughs> it's just too smooth Okay, so my auto smooth is already on, but we're going to take the angle of the auto smooth to be less than not smooth, smooth to be less than 90. <laughs> that way we get rid of that weird look. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, yeah, that, there we go. Shit sharp now. All right, there we go. It, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it really doesn't matter that much, honestly. You want it to be good, but you also don't want to waste time. So now I'm going to be trying to replicate this yellow part. And in order to do that, we're going to actually apply the solidify modifier. And if you're thinking, what? But then you won't be able to change the thickness. Come over here. Come over here. It's fine. Because I can just click size and then Z or S and then Z. And then, whoa, I can change it. Isn't that crazy? The circle of this. Oh, uh oh, oh. <laughs> Gross. So we're going to go side face view, select Y. It's like halfway through the circle, so something like that. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so control, shift, click all the way over here. Just make sure that's the same distance. Now we duplicate it by holding shift and then D and then we click escape. And now we just right click, go over to separate by selection and click tab to get out of edit mode. And then you can actually see separated. All right, now we use the solidify modifier. And I'm gonna start giving everything materials just so I can tell the difference between everything. So this thing, I'm gonna give it like a gray material. I'm going to make it metallic. 
Remember to give everything material because near the end when everything is joined together and if you realize you made a mistake and you want to separate all the materials, just to show you an example. So now everything's joined and then I go to edit mode and then I just click select all and separate and then separate by material and then it's separated. All right, now I'm going to actually set origin to geometry just so I can, there, this looks better, it's easier. Now I'm just trying to line this up with my eyes. I'm actually going to shrink this down a tiny bit by clicking S and then Z just a little bit, just so it's not glitching through. And then I'm going to upgrade the thickness a little bit. Yeah, something like that's good. Gives you something to work with. I'm going to just move it out like that. That looks good. All right. I'm going to give these loop cuts. Just so I don't have to make my selection too big. Now we apply the solidify modifier and now we can go over back to edit mode. Select that. That. And now I'm just going to extrude this. And now to replicate these silver bands right here, shift right click. That's how you get the cursor there. And then I'm going to do shift A, which is just add. And then I'm going to add a plane. S, shrink it down. Well, S is size, but I just say shrink it. Yeah, you know what I mean. All right, and then I'm gonna try and rotate it just so it'll fit properly on here. Hold Control, and then that's how you can get like a perfect rotation. Look at the top left, you can actually see the exact degree. We want 90, there we go. And so this part is thin, so you can do that. S, Z, going to click tab, subdivide it, subdivide, 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 that looks good, give it a material, all right, now that we've subdivided our plane, we can add a shrink wrap modifier, go here, go to project, add our target, this thingy, and then we click negative. And now it looks like it's missing, but we actually just have to offset it. So I'm just going to offset it. Oh, okay. That's perfect. And now while like this, I'm going to click S and then X just so I can try and get it to look like that. I'm going to move it over a bit and now I can actually apply the shrink wrap modifier. I don't really need it anymore. I'm going to smooth that. Now I'm going to add a solidify modifier. see even and I don't want it too thick oh, looks good I don't like the way it actually like looks like the way it's reflecting right now which just means we have to use the auto smooth there we go and like always apply and then we use the mirror modifier and now I'm going to be trying to replicate this whole part. All right, then we go to edit mode. I'm gonna add some loop cuts just to get a more exact, there. And I'm gonna go to face select, there, and then control shift, click. Then control shift, click again. And then control shift, click again. And control shift, click again. And then I'm gonna add that same loop cut. There we go. And by adding that loop cut, I undid my selection, but that's okay. You know what? I'm going to add the mistakes too, because it's all part of learning, dude. So same thing as before. I'm going to duplicate it. Now I'm moving my mouse around, click escape, then right click, separate by selection. Go back to object mode, click here, and I'm going to change this, the material. Just so I can, like before, tell the difference between everything. What is going on? Oh, it's because it's inside it. Ah! Um, solidify. I'm going to make it even. Something like... I like that. That's perfect. Wow. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. Whoever thought we'd get here? Not me. So now I'm going to apply the solidify modifier 
and I'm actually going to split this in half because there's something more that I want to do. So now I'm going to go to side face view and then I'm going to delete one side. All right, now that's split in half, we're going to be selecting, yeah, like that, because we're going to be trying to duplicate that little little nub there. I don't know what, what, what you'd call that. And we're just going to bring this out. Something like that. So click that. Mirror modifier. Boom. Now go to click object and snap cursor to world origin. All right, now we're gonna be trying to replicate that part. So what I just did was go to object, snap, and then snap cursor to world origin. And now we can shift A, go over to cylinder, scale it down. Yeah, so I'm gonna scale it out even more, something like that. And I'm gonna click S and Z. There we go. Let's see, does it? Yeah, so that's perfect. Something like that. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to get rid of this face. There. And I'm also going to get rid of these edges there, all the way to there. All right. And now we. Oh. I think I noticed that. Got to get rid of the edges. There. And now we go into Edge Select. Click that. And I'm using Control Shift Click. Control Shift Click. Um, the reason I'm not doing it all at once is sometimes if I go from Control Shift Click all the way to the other side, sometimes it like selects things in between that I didn't mean to uh, select. So take it a step at a time. Click S for scale. And I'm trying to get something like that. Um, looks pretty similar. i move it out a bit. That looks pretty good. And now, get out of edit mode. I'm going to give it a material. And smooth. And kind of a shitty smooth. So we're going to go here. Auto smooth. There. Not shitty. Alright. I'm just going to do a shift click here. Shift A. Add a plane. S. Scale it down. Scale it down further. Over here, rotate, and doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exact. Something like that looks good. And now I'm gonna click local, just so I can rotate it perfectly. SX, yes. SY. Uh, I don't want that part to intersect there. Like it's it's hardly noticeable, but it's just sometimes a little stuff like that bothers me. You know, you don't want it to look like shit. All right, there. And now I can just give it a material, and I'm gonna give it a solidify modifier. Even thickness. There. Something like that's good. I'm gonna apply it. I'm going to go into edit mode now, and I'm going to take this edge, and I'm going to bring it down like that, just so it kind of looks like a blade. Alright, now, mirror modifier. Cool. Forgot to put a solidify modifier on this. Even... Once again, this part doesn't matter, like, how solid, like, I could do that, I could do this, really doesn't matter. I'm just making sure everything has a solidify modifier on it. And now we object, snap, cursor world origin, I'm going to add a cylinder. The cylinder is going to be the red button thing that you see. That goes all the way up and down that. Now hold control. Get that exact, and then stop at 90 or negative 90. And then we're going to shrink her down, and we're going to switch this back to global. And let's see. Let me get a tiny bit bigger, and then we'll be good. Now, go to material, give it a material. I'm going to make it red, so this one actually does matter what color you make it. 
this part should be yellow, this part should be red, because that's just what it looks like in the movie. There we go. Smooth it out. Looks stupid. Auto smooth. Not stupid. All right. And duplicate. After duplicating, click escape. There we go. And the reason I said that is because if I was to duplicate it and then, oop, I hit my mouse. Oh, oops. Now it's over here. So I'm going to duplicate it again. And then I'm going to shrink S and then Y. Um, yeah, that looks good. All right. And now I'm going to click on the shape that we're boolean in. Go here. Boolean. Select the shape that's going to do the boolean there. Apply. Looks like nothing happened, but I'm a liar. Something did happen. Boom. All right. Now bring that back. Go like there. Um, I'm going to make this. Click that two just so it's not linked. So then now I can change this color. There. One little switch that I'm going to do. I feel like this is actually going down too long. Now, before we start actually to rig it, we want to make sure that all of our modifiers are applied and then we actually want to join all of these pieces. All right, and now I'm going to connect everything. What do I have now? Okay, and then... See, like that. Like, why does it look like that? Oh, okay, well, there we go. Now, before I use my array modifier to get it to look like that, um, I'm going to duplicate the piece because I'm going to be applying the array modifier and I just don't want to make things way harder than it has to. So just by doing that, it's kind of like a checkpoint. Actually, speaking of checkpoints, there we go. I'm going to hold control and then A, apply all. There we go. Now when I actually use the array modifier, Z will go up. Yay! We want it to be separated, not too separated, but also not too close. I'm going to hold shift just so I can get it more exact. And now we can move to the rigging part. So I learned how to rig it to uh, kind of get it to move like Dr. Octopus arms by watching this video that I said in the beginning. So if it seems like I'm ripping that video off, just for convenience sake, I'm repeating it. But y'all know where I got it. Now I'm going to go to Object, Snap, Cursor to World Origin again. Uh, now I'm going to do a side view, solid mode. Um, and I'm going to add a bone. All right, and I want to be able to see through. While having that little top ball selected, I'm going to bring it up like that. Have it rest out the top like that. And then you're going to select the base and then subdivide. And then you can just keep doing that, subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. And basically, the more bones you have, the less it'll look segmented. And that's at the cost of, you know, just being able to run Blender properly. Uh, it depends how good your GPU is. Um, actually, I'm going to bring it down to 9. And then I'm going to click subdivide again. Yeah, 18. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to take this. Goodbye. I'm going to bring that up a tiny bit, just so it's above that. Perfect. And side view. Click E to extrude, and then hold control, just so I can get that nice, perfect, you know, look. And then click. And now we're going to be clicking there, and go into parent, and we're going to clear the parent. There. And then we're going to turn deform off. There. And we're going to name the bone IK, which is short for inverse kinematics. Now select the second bone, go to pose mode, and we're going to apply that. So we're going to apply the inverse kinematics to the one below named inverse kinematics. Sounds confusing, but it'll make sense in a second. Inverse kinematics, the target, armature, the bone, IK. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I just want to make sure it works. Cool. All right, now we're going to add a pull bone. So click on that. E, hold control. Doesn't have to be too big, something like that. Uh, I'm going to name it rotation. 
and turn deform off clear and now I'm going to add circle move it out over here click on the armature alright now we go to back to pose mode go to viewport display under this little bone option custom object we're gonna use that and now when we go back to object mode click on this go to edit mode we're gonna rotate this uh, hold control get that exact rotation 90 and now when we go back here that's gonna be on that side all right, and now with the very first bone selected, we're going to go over here, copy rotation, there, bone, rotation, and then local for both. When we rotate this, it rotates the armature as well. All right, and now just to finish the rig setup, I'm just gonna make sure that it's centered as possible. I'm going to go to the top view and just move it in like that. And now I'm just going to change the view of the armature. I'm going to go over here under object data properties, viewport display, b-bone. Now we're going to apply the mesh to the armature. All right, now we take the mesh, click on the armature, shift click, then parent and with automatic weights. And now let's try it out. Click on the armature, go to pose mode, top one. And okay, reason it's looking like that is we have to click on the mesh, preserve volume, get rid of vertex groups and bone envelopes. And a little magic's gonna happen. Now, there we go. If you notice that little segmenting there, it looks better if you add even more bones but just for you know convenience sake I didn't just to show you how to make it now I don't want this video to be too long so I'm gonna make a separate video on just showing you how to make the claw and if you do know how to make a claw in 3d and you want to attach it to the arm all you, all you gotta do is just move it to the top of the arm where it would appropriately be and then just join it to the mesh and it'll move around with the armature So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll try to help out as many people as I can. If there's an issue that I can't help with, well, fuck. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you learned something, remember to subscribe, like, and if you know if you don't mind hearing my voice, um, I got a couple other videos. I, I, I'm, I'm going to start posting a lot more. I just got a new mic for Christmas, so I'm going to be a real YouTuber. I can't wait to, to sell out, make videos about my new house and do house tours and complain about things that I would have died to have prior. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks.